In this lecture, we are going to work on displaying the sidebar in the home page where the current user can see all the users with whom he has already started the chat. And there, the current user should also be able to search the user with whom he wants to start a new chat. Let's go to VS Code. And here, let me close this header.js file. Let's keep this index.js file open. Let's close this user slice. And let's also close this protected route. Now, in this component, which we have inside this home folder, in there, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it as sidebar. And inside that, we are going to create a sidebar component. From this sidebar component, let's return some JSX. And in order to save some time, I have already written some JSX and to design that some CSS. So let's copy the JSX from here and let's paste it there. And let me also go ahead and let me comment it for now. Okay, let's save the changes. And as you can see in this tip, we are also adding some CSS style. So let's also go ahead and let's copy that CSS style. Let's go back to VS Code and let's go to index.css and there in the bottom let's add the CSS let's save the changes in index.css now in the sidebar component first of all we are going to use this sidebar component in our home component so in place of this comment I want to use the sidebar component so let's go and let's use that Okay, and to use this sidebar component, we also need to import it from the sidebar file. Let's save it. Now, in this sidebar component, we are going to create two more components. So here we are going to use a search component and here we are going to use a user list component. Now, user list component, we will create in our next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to create this search component. Currently, if we go to the web page, in this sidebar, we have not added anything. So you won't see anything in the page. But now let's go ahead and let's create another component called search. So inside this components folder, we are going to create another file. In that, we are going to create another component called search. Let's also export this component from here. Okay. And from here, we want to return some JSX. Now using this search component, we want to display a search bar in the UI. And again, in order to save some time, I have already written some HTML and CSS for that. So let me copy this HTML from here. Let's go to our search component. And from there, let's return that. So in here, if you see, we have one input element. We are calling it as user search text. So this will be an input element from where the current user can search other users with whom he want to start a chat. And then I also want to display a search icon in this input. For that, here I'm using this search icon. And on that also, we have added some CSS. So using this user search button. If I save the changes here, and let's also use this search component in this sidebar component. And to use this search component in the sidebar component, we also need to import it in the sidebar component. Let's save the sidebar component. So we have created search component. We are using this search component in the sidebar component and we are using this sidebar component in the home component. So if you go to the web page now, you will see that we have a search box here with this search icon. Now, in order to design this search bar and this search icon, I have also written some CSS for that. So again, you will find these resources attached with this video so you can download it and use it in your code. Let's go to index.css and there, let's go ahead and let's add that CSS. And let me also copy this comment. Okay. Let's save the changes. And now if we go to the web page, this is how the search text box will look like with this search icon. So let's say when the user types John here, we want to display all the users 
whose name contains John in it. Okay, and we are going to implement this in our next lecture. But what we want is whenever a user types something in this search text box, we want to store it somewhere in our React application so that we can use that value in order to search the user. So in our sidebar component, if you want, you can also create it in the search component. Okay, but I'm going to create it in the sidebar component because that search text, I also want to pass it to user list component, which we will create in our next lecture. So that's why I'm going to create a state here. And in this state, we are going to have a search key. And we are also going to have a state updating function and I'll call it as set search key. And in order to create this state, we are going to use use state hook. And to use this use state hook, we need to import it from React library. Now, initially, let's set this search key with empty string. Now, we want to pass this search key and this set search key to this search component. For that, we are going to use props. So, here I'm going to create an attribute. I'll call it a search key. And to that, I'm going to assign this search key state. And then I'm also going to create set search key attribute. And to that, I'm going to assign this set search key state updating function. And in order to make it more readable, let's move it to separate lines. Now, in the search component, since we are passing the search key and the set search key, here we are going to receive them as props. So let me pass an object here. And there we are going to receive the search key and set search key. Now keep in mind that this name must match because here we are doing object destructuring. So to make things work properly, I'll copy this search key and I'll specify it here just to avoid any spelling mistake. And let's also copy this set search key and let's specify it here. Okay, let's save the changes in this file. Now what we are going to do is on this input element, we are going to bind the value property and we are going to bind it with search key. So whatever value we will have in this search key that we want to assign to this value attribute. And then we are also going to listen for change event. So for that, we are going to use on change. And to this, we are going to assign a function which we want to execute. So here, let's pass a callback function. Here I'm using arrow function syntax. Okay, and this function is going to receive the event object. So let me simply call it as E. And what we want to do here is when this on change event will happen, we want to call this set search key. And using that set search key, we want to update the value of this search key state. And what value do we want to update for this search key? Whatever value is typed in this search input. For that, here we can say E dot target, which will return us this search input and from there we are going to read the value which is entered in that search input and that value we are going to assign to this search key using this set search key state updating function let's save this next in order to fetch all the users from the database we are going to create a function which is going to call get all users api from our backend application for that, in the API calls folder, let's go to this user.js. There, let me copy this code, this function. Let's paste it here. We are going to change the name, and here we are going to call get all users. Okay, this is also going to run asynchronously. And in order to get all the users, let's go to Postman. And here we have get all users API. So the endpoint is api slash user slash get all users so let me copy this endpoint and let's specify it here so this is going to return us all the users except the currently logged in user so from here we want to return the response data in the response data we are going to have all the users except the currently logged in user so this here it is going to return us an array of user objects now from where we are going to call this get all users function let's say 
when we are making a call to get the current user from there only we also want to call this get all users and we are making a call to get current user from this protected route as you can see here here we have a function called get logged in user and from there we are making a call to get all the users in the same way let's also create another function here let's call it get all users you can call it anything this is going to run asynchronously inside this let's add a try catch block from the catch block if any error occurs let me simply copy this code from here okay and here let me copy all this code let's paste it here okay but here instead of calling get logged user we are going to call this get all users so let me save this file let's go to protected route and let's first import that function so we want to import get all users from this users.js file and now let's go ahead and let's call that function here okay so again when we are going to make this call before that we want to show the loader and after we have received the response we want to hide the loader and if the response is success in that case what we want is we want to create a new state so let's go to user slice and there we are going to create one more state i'm going to call it as all users initially it is going to be an empty array and here we are going to create another action which will be set all users and here we will say state dot all users equals action dot payload okay and from here let's also export set all users let's save the changes here so now in our protected route we are going to call this set all users so instead of using set user here we are going to call set all users and in order to use the set all users we also need to import it from this file and there we want to update all users state with the response data because as we learned in the response data we are going to get an array of all the users all right now let's go ahead and let's call this function also from the use effect let's save the changes and let's quickly verify if these two requests are being sent or not from our application and here we have this error response is not defined in the protected route line number 37 so if we go to line number 37 here let's go ahead and let's create the response variable and initially let's set it to null let's save the changes now and one more change what i'm going to do is if you see this function name and the api function which we are calling both have the same name so i'm going to change this name to maybe get all users from db and let's call this function in use effect let's save the changes let's go to our application and let's try to go to home page and we are in the home page let me open the network tab here okay let me clear everything let's make a request again and you will see that the request to get logged in user as well as get all users is being sent from here so now in the response we should have all the users from the database except the currently logged in user currently logged in user is mary jane so except that we should have all other users in the response so in this lecture we implemented the search functionality now what we want is when the user will type something here for example john we want to display all the filtered users below this search text let's do that in our next lecture